A seed time and harvest day to all. Allow me to start this broadcast with a question. When is the best time to sow a seed? Again, I would like to repeat, when is the best time to sow a seed? Stay tuned as we continue to meditate on what we started two days ago regarding seed time and harvest. This is Kuya Norman reminding you that God has deposited in you the future of the world in a form of a seed. If you agree with this statement, please say this with me. Can we say this together? God has deposited in me the future of the world in a form of a seed. Allow me to greet you again a seed time and harvest day, everyone watching or listening in today's broadcast all over the world. I said a seed time and harvest day everyone because when god created you you were created with a seed to plant with the intent of having a good harvest to feed yourself and the world do you believe that god has deposited in you a seed for a brighter future then declare this with me i am created with a seed to make me live an abundant life and a satisfying future can we repeat that I am created with a seed to make me live an abundant life and a satisfying future. Let's pray. Father in heaven, help us to understand that in Christ, we have given all things that pertains to life and godliness. Help us, Holy Spirit, to discover that all of these are already deposited in me. Open my eyes to see and give me wisdom to make this a reality. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. Welcome to all watching and listening to this broadcast today. Uh, someone asked me, uh, where can I uh, see the video yesterday? You know, when you are watching Facebook, um, of all the things that are coming in to your uh, to your news feed so many things already are there so it will be very hard to find the videos so I I have a good news for you if you have been blessed in the previous broadcast and you want to save it or copy and play it later then I have a good news I place it in a YouTube channel so you can just go and download and you can watch it later or probably you can also share that to someone else so go to the youtube channel all for free you can go there and watch also the previous broadcast so uh, if you want teachings more of grace and the finished work of christ then just click subscribe so that whenever i make new videos you can be notified so that's the good news announcement you can go to the youtube to find out these videos that has been published since our community quarantine again i would like to remind those who are new to this broadcast that this is centered on the cross and the resurrection of jesus that is why we take communion every time we have our broadcast i believe that every time we intentionally remember the cross we are also drawing closer to jesus christ by taking the holy communion you know when you love someone and you spend time with him intentionally i believe that your relationship will continue to grow do you agree with that and that is the reason why we take holy communion and so for me there are two possible reasons in taking communion one is that we just would like to acknowledge and remember what the lord has done uh, you know people can easily forget things but when we have a schedule intentionally meet god in your time then you will have developed that relationship uh, stronger and closer to each other second thing if there are things that you want god to touch you uh, physical emotional or spiritual then taking communion is also one of the best way to keep in touch with our lord for those uh watching i would like to let you know that this is our 3 p.m live broadcast in the uh, facebook during this covid 19 extended community quarantine days so uh, god willing uh, we only have one more week 
and then it will be over. So we don't know if we still have to go on with a broadcast like this. But this time, I am grateful that we are able to minister to one another. So I believe if you have nothing to do, this is the right time to prepare yourself because I believe that God has greater things for you ahead after the COVID-19. Do you agree that? with that? <laughs> Okay, we also have similar faith building broadcast every 10 in the morning with uh, Pastor uh, Bon and Mayan for our family devotion. And we also have our 5 o'clock habit, 5 p.m. with Pastors Paul and Vicky Mata. All at the Word for All Nations International Facebook page. And you know, you can also enjoy the Tagalog version of the 5 o'clock habit with Pastor George Pilotin every Saturday, 5 p.m. And every Wednesday, we have an in-depth study of the Book of Ephesians by Pastor Ron Constable. Every Wednesday, that's 7 in the evening. So, thank God for that announcement. Let's go back to the question, when is the best time to sow a seed? We have been talking about seed time in harvest. This is now our third day. So, the question is, when is the best time to sow a seed? Now, before going to that, let's go to the summary of uh, what we have learned yesterday. Yesterday, we learned that our future is hidden in the seed we call from the, the Word of God. So what is that seed we learned yesterday? It's the Word of God. According to the scripture we learned yesterday, Mark uh, chapter 4, we learned that when our heart is fertile, then the Word of God is deposited in our hearts, then it may have a great harvest of 30-fold, how many times? 60-fold or even 100-fold. So one thing is true, one seed will always grow more. It's not just times 10, but it could be 30, 60, and 100-fold. And we learned that, you know, the Word is not really something that uh, we need to think about what is the Word of God? The Word of God is, according to the Bible, the person himself, Jesus Christ. So it is important to distinguish uh, who Jesus Christ really is. So that is important that we need to read the manual of our soul, the manual of our walk with God, and that is the Bible. The Bible is very important in our walk with God because this is where we know and learn about Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, uh, yesterday, I also emphasized that there are there is such thing as the Old Covenant. We are not part of that. And there is such thing as the New Covenant that is for us. Can I repeat that? The Old Covenant are for the Jews. It's not for us. We are not part of that. And we are now in the New Covenant. If you Remember, I mentioned that the new covenant started at the cross. Okay, can I repeat that? The new covenant or the New Testament started in the cross. So, if you read the Bible, and that is before the cross, then uh, I want you to have that kind of mindset that maybe those words that is stated there are to be interpreted, interpreted in line of the cross. So, uh, we need to know that now uh, when we summarize the commandment uh, you said kuya norman we are no longer living in the in the in the commandments right the old uh, the old covenant the ten commandments we are no longer uh, focusing on that so what is then the new commandment that god is telling us now i have a good news for you first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 verse 23 to 24 outline the shorten commandment in the new testament and this is it okay are you ready now jot it down first john chapter 3 verse 23 to 24 this is how the new commandment is stated uh in a nutshell this is it verse 23 so these are his commands that we continually place our trust in the name of his son i'm reading from the ppt or uh, the Passion Translation. Can I repeat that? Verse 23, 1 John chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. So these are His commands. 
that we continually place our trust in the name of His Son, that is Jesus Christ, that and that we keep loving one another just as He commanded us. So that is how the short statement of the new commandment in our time. So this is for us. The, the, the first commandment is we continually put our trust in Jesus Christ. That's the first. So if you notice before, it says love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Now it's different. It says here, we continually, the first commandment is continually place our trust in the person of Jesus Christ. Now, this is very important. Why? Because the New Testament started at the cross. So there are times we falter, there are times we doubt. Uh, what happened when, you know, I have, I have wrong, I have fallen short. Now remember, our life is now anchored on Christ, the person of Christ. So that's why the command is, put your trust continually on Jesus. And then second is, love one another. Okay, so if we say the old, the old teaching is love God with all your heart, tama ba? Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Now, the God there, uh, sometimes we mistakenly uh, believe that it is the God of the Old Testament, right? But I'm not saying here that uh, uh, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is different. But what we're saying here is you center on the cross. Your life is centered on the cross, not on the previous uh, covenant that is the old covenant so we are now in the new covenant so our commandment is centered on trusting on Jesus Christ and second is loving one another okay so that's something that uh, I appreciate and learn actually just recently also um, I just did, I just realized that this is true that uh, it has to be loving Jesus trusting Jesus because our New Testament started at the cross. It makes sense, am I right? Because the New Testament is centered on the cross, then our commandment is trusting on the finished work of Jesus. And secondly, then we love one another. That's the new commandment. And nothing more, nothing more, it's just this one. So when we trust what the Lord has done, and then we love one another, you are it. Nothing more requirement. Nothing more requirement. So trust in the Lord, the finished work of Jesus, and love one another. And this is what it says in verse 24. Uh, verse 24, For all who obey His commands find their life joined in union with Him, that is in Christ. And He lives and flourishes in them. Now, you, you know what happened? When we trust in the Lord, according to the Word of God, we are in union with Christ. And what happened? Our lives will flourish. Wow! That is our inheritance. When we are in union with Christ, our life will just certainly flourish. It's not your doing. It's not my doing. It's God's doing. He will be the one to make you and me flourish. Can we declare that? When I am in union with Christ, my life will just flourish as it is. Wow! We don't need to struggle hard how to make it flourish and be fruitful. What we need to do is when we trust the Lord, then He, our God, will make us flourish or fruitful. Why? Because we are in union with Christ. Then He lives. Our life will be classified as flourishing. Now, it's, it's also stated in verse 24, we know and have proof that He constantly lives and flourishes in us. So who is flourishing in us? The Christ that is in us is the one flourishing. Wow, so we are that conduit of that blessing. We are just channel of that blessing. So who flourishes in us? Jesus Christ Himself is flourishing in your life and in my life. It's not we who struggle to flourish. It's Jesus Christ Himself that is in us, that is now flourishing. And how does He, how, how is He doing, uh, how, how does He do it for us? It says here, by the Spirit that is given to us. So because of the Spirit that is in us, then we are constantly 
in step with Him. So we cannot go, uh, you know, away from Him because the Holy Spirit is the one making it clear to us. Wow! So remember the new commandment, First John chapter three, verse twenty-three and twenty-four. What trusting Jesus and then loving one another. So then what happened is Jesus Christ will flourish in our life. So uh, what happened to our future then? Now remember, we learned before that our life is hidden in Christ. Can we say that? My life is hidden in Christ. So when people will look at us, they will see Christ in us because we are hidden. Uh, we learned that in the scripture that we, our old self, died and we are now a new person. So therefore, when they look at us, it's the new person they see in you. Wow, when we are covered with Christ. This is what? The new covenant. We are dead to Christ. There are two, I have, I have mentioned, there are two things in the covenant. Jesus died and we also died. Jesus Christ rose again from the dead and we also rose again together with Jesus. Therefore, as I've said, we started living eternal life. Not the moment we received Christ. It was the time when Jesus Christ rose again from the dead. It started there. Ours is just to believe. To believe that it happened 2,000 years ago. Wow! So, our life today is not, you know, uh, it is limited to the do's and don'ts the list of what to do and not to do. Our life today is what? Anchored with a person. Wow. So it's not, oh, this is the list. Uh, do this, do this, and do that, and do that. Don't do this. No, we are not living that way. Our life today is anchored with a person. A person. It's personal thing. So uh, maybe God's instruction for you at the point of time today may not be the same, as God's instruction for me. So it may be different because it is related to a person. It's not do's and don'ts that all of us has to follow. So it's not saying, oh, three times a day you need to pray like this and that. No, it is enjoying the presence of a person. If the person goes this way and you go with that person, if the person stays, then you stay with that person. Wow, that is relationship with Christ. Now remember, Another name for Jesus is grace, unmerited favor. We don't merit that. We don't deserve but that, but it is given to us as a gift. Can we say that Jesus is a gift to me? So when I receive that gift, all the privileges, all the benefits are mine. Wow. So remember, our future is hidden in the seed, the word of God or Jesus Christ himself which is the word Jesus is the word and our future is in the word wow so we have been reminded in 2nd Corinthians 1 20 that all the promises of Jesus or God has been accomplished by Jesus ours is just to say amen to that to agree with that and all the promises of God are manifested the moment we say amen we agree with that and so it will manifest in our life all the promises are already yes in jesus and so the moment we say lord i agree with that promise i am healed i am protected i am watched by angels around me surrounded by my family is blessed then that will manifest in your life because you agree you agree with god wow do you remember the time when you when you bought your first cell phone you know the most expensive cell phone you have so when you receive your cell phone what do you have the cell phone plus the what what do you have huh the manual <laughs> you know when you become a believer when you become a child of god what you need to do is just find out what is in the manual what are uh, the things that has been written about you so don't believe on what you think don't believe on what other people say then look just look at the manual what does it say for example for example uh, it says in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 when you look at the manual your life this is what happened to you 
it says there, your sins are forgiven, and then your sins will be remembered no more. Wow! So when you look at your manual, this is my life. Jesus Christ forgiven my sins, and He remembered my sins no more. And so we say, Amen! Thank you, Lord! So notice that if you look at the Bible and read your word, the manual of your life, almost always we just say, Thank you, Lord! Thank you, Lord! Thank you for what you have done in my life. And that is why we can say, Wow! When we look at the benefit of our life in Jesus, we can always say, Wow! And Wow! And Wow! Ano yan ang wow sa Tagalog? Mapahanga ka na lang, no? <laughs> well, I ran short of that uh, word. Now, for example, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says that I am now a new person. So, wow! Bago na pala ako. My old life is past. I am now a new person. John 1.12, if you can take, do- take note of that, it says, you are now a child of God. Wow! I am a child of God. Believe it, and that is yours. And then, Philippians 3.20, it says that I am a citizen of heaven. Wow, these are all in your manual, in your New Testament, New Covenant manual. You are now a citizen of heaven. And Hebrews 13.5, it says there, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. So when times are quite, you know, challenging, look at this word and say, Thank you, Lord, you will never leave me. You will never forsake me. Hallelujah. By the way, before he says, never leave me and forsake me, it says there, do not love money. <laughs> yeah? do, not, do not love money, it says there, because Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. What we are saying is, Jesus is saying, yes, money could be a measurement to buying all our needs, but Jesus said, don't focus on that. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Psalm 23, chapter 23, verse 1. It says there that I will lack nothing. Okay? It's also stated in John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus is our good shepherd. Tama ba? That he said, I will give you abundant life. So similar to Psalm 23, 1 and John chapter 10, verse 1, it says he is our shepherd. And John 10, 10 says that he will give us abundant life. Wow. And then, Psalm 91.16. You can take note of that. Psalm 91.16, I will live long and satisfying life. Can we say that? I will live long and satisfying life. So when there are sickness and disease around us, you can take this in your manual and say, I will live long and satisfying life because that is the promise of my God, my Lord. And I am one with Him. I am covered. I am in union with Him. I am no longer living, but Christ living in me. Psalm uh, Isaiah 53, 5 to 6. What does it say? That we are given shalom by His stripes. We are healed. Healing there is wholeness or shalom. That means all areas of your life, you are healed. So keep claiming that. Keep writing that, saying that every day. I am healed. Every single area of my life is healed. Nothing missing, nothing broken. I am made whole by God. Wow. And then, ito pa. Psalm 118, verse 17. When you are afraid of dying, this is what it says. David said, I will live and not die to proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, God has already given us a statement like, I will live long, satisfying life. Now, when we say long and satisfying life, we will not, according to the Bible, actually, he did not change that. 120, actually, is the lifeline of every person. We can go that way. So, if there is shorter than that, then the enemy could be doing something or maybe deceiving us by doing something that is not taking care of our body. But normally, naturally, we can go 120 according to the word of God. So, David said, I will live and not die to proclaim the goodness of the Lord. So, there is a purpose why we live long, to proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Can, I, can we say that? I live long to proclaim the goodness of the Lord. So, what is this to us? 
we need to go back to the manual and look at your benefit and what? Say that for yourself. Now, let's go back to the seed time in harvest uh, text, Genesis 8, 22. It says there, as long as the earth endures, there is seed time and harvest. Cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Look at that. Remember, Jesus already made uh, his equation, his part in our life in that he has already declared success for all of us. So don't ever doubt, don't ever worry, because that is what he said. Now, what would be our part? When we walk with Jesus, there are some uh, practical steps that we can do. For example, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Open your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I'll start with verse 6. TPT. Verse 6 hanggang 9. It says here, here's my point. A stingy sower will reap a meager harvest, but the one who sows from a generous spirit will reap an abundant harvest. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving, all because God loves hilarious generosity. Yes, God is more than ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough. Huh? Anong goal ni, ni God sa atin? You will have more than enough for everything. Every moment in every way. So this is God's goal for us. What is that? We will have more than enough of everything, every moment, and in every way. He will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing you do. Just as the scriptures say about the one who trusts in him. Because he has sown extravagantly and given to the poor, his kindness and generous deeds will never be forgotten. Now, when you encounter this verse and the Lord is telling you, My son, my daughter, what? Be a generous giver. Now remember, you are hidden in Christ and you are walking with him and God is telling you, give. And this is what will happen to you. Our future, remember, is hidden in the seed. And so the moment Jesus will say, Give, my son, give my daughter generously, and this is what will happen to your life. Remember, this is not do's and don'ts, but this is the prompting of the Holy Spirit in us. Because Jesus gave his life, and he was able to give a seed that gave him many sons in return when he died. And so the same thing with us, our prosperity is also based on what? Giving. And the giving here, it says here, is generous giving. Now, look at that. A farmer, when he sows a little, will also reap a little. Tama ba? But here, it's more on the heart. It's more on the heart. It is what? Joyful generosity. Joyful giving. Wow. So, whatever we have, we can give with a joyful heart and say, Lord, thank you. You said I will share. You said I will give. Then I'll do it for your glory and honor. So it's not about religious duty, how many percent, how many percent. No, it's what God is telling you to give. Now, it says here that verse 10, this generous God who supplies abundant seed. So who is the God who will supply you with seed? Now, even the seed is coming from God. Who is this God? A generous God. So the God who is asking you to share is the God who is generous. Now, our seed comes from the Lord. Now, there are two kinds of seed here we learn. Seed for food, for your eating, and seed for your planting. Now, remember, there are two kinds of seed. One seed is for your food to eat. Another seed is for planting or sowing. It is the seed that you sow that will go back to you multiplied. The seed that you eat, no more. <laughs> it's only the seed that you sow to others, to the work of God, that will go back to you multiplied. Do you see the point there? So it is telling us that the supply comes from the Lord. And that, as a result, it says there, it will give what? Glory and praises to the God who is the one who gives. It's not really for you. Yes, you just benefit from it. You get the joy of, you know, receiving. But primarily, praises will go to God because of our giving. Wow. So that's what God wanted us to do. 
Now, well, the time is too short. I just would like to let you know my story about giving. Now, there was a time in our life that we were, you know, quite hard. But God was telling us so to the education of children, parents who are in need. So we obey that. Whatever we have, we shared. And, you know, we are now here in Manila. We were in Zamboanga before. But God was challenging us. Uh, sow to the seed sow your seed to the to the children who are in need and so just to make it short I was able to study my wife was able to study my my son was able to finish college my daughter finished college and my my uh, youngest daughter is also assured of finishing college because someone said you know just come to us and we will pay for the tuition so that is just to summarize how God good is how good God is. Now, regarding food, God is also telling us, do not eat everything you have. Share to others. So, these are prompting of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, you just follow it. And the Lord will just take care of you. And I also said, uh, minister to others so that your children, when you are away, someone also will minister to your children. And it happened to me. I was praying, Lord, take care of my son my daughters that they will also someone will also uh, share to them minister to them the word of god while we are away so while we while we do share to other people the, the gospel we are also praying that our children will have the same privilege someone will also sow to them regarding travel when you know there are people who are in need of some funds when they travel the lord will tell us no share something a little what you have and you know what I experienced? We experienced going somewhere else abroad, you know, free. <laughs> now, I'm not saying uh, uh, asking for people to, to do it for us, but what I'm saying is it happened to us. So it could happen to, to you when the Lord is telling you, share, because this is what will happen to you. Now, regarding career, people are struggling for their career. So when God is telling us, saw something for their, for their career, and you know, uh, we remember our children will have their career in the future and so we want that they will have an assured future so we did that we also shared something for them and so my son and my daughter are now in place with their career so thank God for that so whatever it is God is telling you sow something so that when you, when you will be able to reap you will reap generously so the bottom line here is that when the Spirit of God is telling you to do something, then just do it. Just do it because He is a generous God. When you read the Bible and you have some issues, for example, say, Lord, shall we share or shall we not? Read the Bible and say, oh, this is the Word of God telling us. And then just follow the Word of God. Amen? You know, God is talking to us every day. When we have questions, go to the Word of God and look for the answer. He will tell you more on that. If you have some question on that, maybe we can talk about that in our future broadcast. <laughs> How to listen to the word of God every day. Now, when is the right time to sow? Now, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 3, I mean chapter 11, this is what he said. Chapter 3, uh, chapter 11, verse 4. Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. So what we are telling here is even if you feel it or not feel it, then sow. The, the, the time is today. Do not wait for tomorrow when you feel good or not. The right time to sow is today. When? When is the right time to sow? It's today. No. Don't now. It's now. It's, don't wait for tomorrow. So sowing must be done as a lifestyle. Now Ecclesiastes 3 is also telling to us to invest. Now, that's another topic, but what we are saying here is the time to sow is today. Now, hearing all this from the Lord Jesus Christ, are you in love with the Lord? <laughs> Your life is hidden in Christ. Your future is hidden in Christ. You will never be wrong when you place your trust with Jesus. Are you ready now to take communion and say, thank you, Lord, for the new life in Christ? Now, take your bread. This is what it says in the scripture. 1 Corinthians 11, For I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, 
and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's remember Jesus, what he has done on that cross. Hallelujah. Let's take the cup. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's partake of the cup together. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for my new life in Jesus. I am with Christ, in union with Christ, and my future is in you. Father, thank you for a bright, abundant future you already have destined and promised for me. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. Today, I speak blessing to my home, to my family, to my children, to my workmates, to my office mates, to my employer, to my employees. Lord, I speak blessing for them that they too may understand the love of Jesus, the finished work of the Lord. Thank you that in you I am secured and I have a bright future. That includes my family and my country as well. I speak blessing to my president that they too will have abundant life. They will be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. This I pray and commit in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you very much for listening and see you tomorrow. God bless.